ahead and give it a start. Okay, I call to order the regular Planning Commission meeting December 16th. Roll call, please. Chair Riley? Is absent. Vice Chair Quilty? Here. Commissioner Andrade? Here. Commissioner DeBolt? Here. Commissioner Gross? Here. Commissioner Lowe? Here. Commissioner Sulfocanic? Here. Okay, please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, <coughs> indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, we'll open it up for oral communications. If there's somebody who would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda. I would, thank you. Okay, come up and sign in. I did sign in. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm going to come. I'm not going to Do we need to be at the podium to be yeah, recorded? Yeah, you have the microphone and the camera. Oh, because it's they're taped. Yeah. The meetings are taped. These are videotaped. So well, then they, I'll put this here. Okay, great. How's that? And I have a you can hold it. And I have a folder for everything. <laughs> what am I looking at? They're not in order home. Okay. So you need me to talk. Oh. Candy's there. Be happy to <laughs> be happy to talk. Um, I'm Ann Bickle. I live in College Park North on Holden Circle. Um, we've lived here, gosh, almost 32 years now. My kids went to school at Los Al, all three of them graduated from there. <coughs> I worked in Los Al so, uh, for 15 years at West Ed on Lampson Road. So I'm a pretty strong member of the community and um, very committed to the community at least in our little area. I, um, <clears throat> I'm doing the Christmas party for them this weekend, which is 25 people. So we have a wonderful area. So I'm concerned. Um, I love the community. I love living here. But it changed for me last summer when the RV that you see pictured there and in your folders moved in. And it's a, it's a huge vehicle and it's parked right now you could drive there tomorrow if you'd like to it's parked in front of the house and let me show you That's okay. the character 
of our neighborhood. It's changed the character of the community. And so I'm here just to say, if this is the community that you want, with RVs like this parked in front yards, then, you know, I don't need to be here. We'll move. But if it's not the community you want, if LoSalle, if you don't want LoSalle to be a recreational vehicle community, with this kind of size, there's no size limit in the code. So, it's <coughs> very slow I think, to allow this kind of a vehicle sitting in the driveway. Um, in, in what's a neighborhood community, and I just came to tell you that that's, this is my experience, and um, I wanted you to see it firsthand. What street are you on? Golden Circle. College Park North. So a wonderful. fall. Yeah. Word low. It's a wonderful cul-de-sac. Yeah. So, it's a cul-de-sac, so the I'm one of the only ones, or we're the only ones that see it sitting there because people, you know, they don't, they don't come in and hold us out. But um, anyway, I'm just here to tell you, I think this has um, changed the character of the community. I think it's um, a slippery slope, and um, I urge you to think about um, what this means for people moving in to know that this RV could be sitting, you know, next to them. Okay, yeah. I didn't think we could park RVs. They can park them, but I, I did a lot of research before I moved into the city regarding that. I wasn't aware that you could park it <coughs> in the front yard. I thought it had to be on a side yard, and I do know about the five-foot Behind clearance. the yeah. gate. Right. Behind the gate, but it had yeah. to be... I, so, I'm, I guess I, I'm trying to understand, and I don't know how we can find out, um, with regards to having it uh, in the front yard. Does it say anything with regards to that? Yeah. We, could have, we could have Tom okay. report back to the commission on, okay. on any questions the commission may have. I, yeah, because as far as manipulating the rules, I'm not sure how that can be done if you're not allowed I, to have it parked in the, I, in the I just want to remind the commission that while you can take comment tonight, because it's not on the agenda, you cannot address the item, it can be scheduled for a future um, agenda, but it would be a violation of the Brown Act to discuss it. Okay. So can we schedule that then for a future meeting to talk about what the code is? As long as you talk about the code and not the case. Right. That's what I, I was looking for. Because you're not a code enforcement <coughs> hearing body. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think you could part well, them, so. I guess that's the other question is, is this is, see, it seems like it's more of a code code enforcement d than us. Well, Miss, no, I think she's desiring a code change. Mm. I think that's where she's leaning, is desiring a, a code change. Um, I, I can't initiate a code change, but I'm assuming that she can. Yes. Well, it'll be interesting to look at that. Might have, we had some history not too long ago. Yeah. Can we also look up some of the information on that and bring back to us? Sure. I can't recall some of it. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Actually, do we have to keep them now? Or no. No. There wasn't already, a public there hearing. hearing. Then we're fine. We're good. <laughs> All right. Thank, All right. You, thank you very much. Points. We addressed it in 2014, I think. I know we addressed it, but I there were some things on it that I can't recall. I think it might have been 2013 because I don't think you've done it since I was on it. It might have been finalized yeah. in 14 by the yeah. city council, probably. Yeah. yeah. It was ordinance 1402, so. Okay, seeing as there's nobody else to come up, we'll close the oral communications and move on to the approval of minutes. Good. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. There's nothing on the consent calendar. So we'll move on to item A, resolution of attention <coughs> regarding vacant lots and buildings. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. The first step of changing a code is always to make sure that the planning commission is interested in changing the code. 
So when, we, when an issue comes up with staff and we're challenged with an issue, we always look to the Planning Commission to first adopt a notice of intention. Um, what we would like to do is try to establish some kind of guidelines for landscaping or maintenance of vacant lots in our city. We're not sure how far we want to take it yet, but we want to make sure that the Commission is first on board with us taking this task on. Um, if so, you would pass this resolution, give us some guidance, and we'll go on our way and hopefully bring back something that may work for the city of Los Alamitos. I think it's a great idea because I drive by that place every day now, and it drives me crazy. I did see a guy out there mowing in the middle of the field, but then when I went by the next day, it didn't look like it had gone any lower. I didn't know exactly what he was doing, but does anybody have any comments? We do questions? have an ordinance or how tall? We do. That's regular maintenance, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, there's no teeth in it to require it to maybe have a five foot landscape berm around the perimeter like mm -hmm. some cities do. And then the fence will be on the other side of the berm mm -hmm. to make it more aesthetically pleasing. And that fence is falling down now in spots. Mm -hmm. And is there also any cities that we can look at some of their codes and how they've adapted them? We already have. We, we found two that we like, and based on the guidance here, we'll go look at others that may match some of the comments from the commission. How many questions? How many how many vacant lots do we have in the city? There's two commercial lots. The really obvious ones is the one next to the high school and, and the one on the picture behind me. And then there's a few residential, both in the R2 and the R. There's none in the R3 that are totally vacant. Well, but there's a few Monty in the R2. Lot. Uh, Monty Collins' lot is semi-vacant as well now. Why doesn't our code enforcement <coughs> deal with? I mean, I get. Oh, I mean, not recently, but in the past, when the code enforcement, I, I'd, we'd get citations mm -hmm. on stuff that I manage for little planters in the back, the weeds were six inches high, and I'm going, the, <coughs> the gardener hasn't that's been that's there yet. You know, it's like, really? But yeah, I think that's, that's when somebody calls and reports you. Code no, it was. They've ticketed the corner of Walnut and uh, Catalina mm -hmm. a few times mm -hmm. yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, because of the over, even though we it's have the high. watering, the weed, they're not taking care of their weeds. So they've gone through the regular code enforcement process of getting notice of violations. If they don't care within 10 days, it becomes a ticket. They've actually had tickets. How would, how would something like this change other than? There's nothing that requires me to have them upgrade their landscaping, to have at least landscape from a marketing point of view to make it look like it hasn't been abandoned. So it's more of an aesthetics thing, not just a maintenance thing. We have maintenance code. Well, I need a little more teeth to require the lot to be more attractive. We so are we zeroing in on one lot? Because I don't think we could apply. No, I would Does, I, do these Would these rules have to apply to all vacant lots? It would. Yeah. Yeah. Those are just the examples we have in our city. <coughs> And the fencing around it, can we also include that? Yeah, we can look at fencing as well, uh, fencing standard. If you remember about, what, 30 years ago at the heart of, no, it was probably about 93 or 94, in the heart of the recession, um, Paramount did a program where they required white picket fences around every vacant lot um, just to give it a uniform uh, look. And so cities have been interested in doing those kind of things. We're not interested in going in that direction. But we're interested in having some level of care on properties more than today. As much as I don't have anything against the banners, we should also address that in the coding. Yeah. Any more questions? Is that lot still owned by the oil company? Yeah. 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 That one, yeah. He has a 30, he's had an option on it for almost 30 years. It's owned by the oil company, but a person has been in escrow for 30 some odd years. The guy that owns the towing company. Really interesting. And he was recently trying to sell his option to the school district. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion <coughs> to, to bring it back with 
to approve the resolution. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. We'll move on to item 8A, continue discussion of non-conforming use provisions. We have a staff report or how do Certainly, we? I'm going to introduce it a little and then Lisa's going to take okay. over. You guys she's are going to discuss She's not feeling it. really great. <laughs> I know. Uh, so we're going to, um, what we've done is um, we hopefully have taken some of your comments and thrown them into a sample ordinance with many questions to go down and answer those questions tonight. Based on the answer to the questions, we know how to formulate and finalize the ordinance for your use in the future. So Lisa's taken a little time to kind of give you a framework to try to get you to that spot. spot. So while it may seem that we've spent a lot of meetings on this topic, I think it was useful to go there and then to end up here. I think it hel has helped the commission understand non-conforming structures, uses, and lots. And we've also learned where your passion level is regarding these various topics. And so it's helped us greatly in going through this three meeting exercise. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Lisa. I yeah, basically, I'm sorry. I think if we can just go down and do the questions. I felt we got the basics, but then the discussion became very kind of scattered. And I thought if I put questions in each section where I thought the question belonged, we could better understand where we were going with it. So last time the um, commission directed that non-conforming uses would be allowed to remain um, for as long as they want it. But I want to know, did you want this to be for non-conforming use of a property where it's just land? And I don't know if you even have anything like that. Um, and for accessory buildings and not for other structures. So let's say you had a uh, use that was used for agriculture in the middle of a residential area where there was no structures involved so there's really no financial investment in it do you still want that to be able to remain for are in we going down a b c d or are we jumping around i thought i started at the beginning in section two mm -hmm. on page it really starts eight on page 12. eight is the first Question, question unless the I'm, there's something you want to discuss Highlight before then. Oh, all right. I thought yeah, it was <coughs> about a non conforming use on a non on a whatever. Okay. If the 010 and 020 were just basic, the purposes, um, what it applied to, I'm open to any comments on those chapters, but the first question I had was on the non-conforming use, not a non-conforming structure, but a use. And whether, and so that was the first question, did you want that indefinite to apply if it was just use of property? And, and I don't know if we have any of those. Okay, I don't, uh, Go ahead. The indefinite, and the tie, I don't see it, in your question, of course, I got note. Here, I got a note here that says I don't understand the question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I, subsection A says non-conforming uses shall be allowed to remain provided the use is not abandoned, intensified, or the building the non-conforming use is located in is not expanded or reconstructed. So that basically got rid of all the amortization that you directed the last time. So the question is then, should a non-conforming use of property where there is no structure involved be allowed to remain indefinitely as well? And, and I don't know that you have anything that would yeah, even apply in this city. I had a question about A, just the wording in A. We're talking about a non-conforming use, mm -hmm. and you start the sentence, non-conforming uses, and then you go to intensified, um, or the building that the use is located in. Why don't, I don't think we should worry about the building where the, in this 
portion. We're talking about the use, not the building. Just talk about the use. Um, I would eliminate the word building because we're talking about, to me, I think this is where the ambiguity arises in our existing code is that we start mixing everything together in trying to explain one and then you can go back to the, you know, you try, then the, you, well, we're talking I, about uses. And I think the idea here was, I was focusing on use, but if the building is reconstructed, do you want to allow the non-conforming use to come back? if a building, for whatever reason, is you completely reconstruct it. Isn't that addressed in a different question, a different section? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, 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 that, this, it this, is, this is, I thought somewhere it was. Else. Yeah, it is somewhere else, and that's why, okay. you know, I think we should have it in one spot, wherever we, yeah, I, I didn't, it is farther down somewhere. Um, If that's the consensus, I can certainly take out the reference to the building. Well, I had only towards the. And then, uh, well, I, w I, I instead of building, I, w I said something like the space, because if w the use is, it might be located in a building, but it's it's. Um, If the building is torn down or reconstructed, um, I don't know. I'll just keep going on. I, I'm still. I'm I still. Think we deal with I'm struggling with it. And I can't. I can't. We deal but with again, the we're not later talking on. about a non-conforming structure here. We're talking about a conforming structure that has a non-conforming use in it. That, that was what this was intended to get to, whereas versus where the structure itself is non-conforming. Well, in your question, you say, is this true for non-conforming uses of property as well as where it is it, and just I, land? And, and I and think that's... it's just land, then there's no use. No. And, and also, a and then you say excess... Yeah, contractor, it's thank you. Percentage. That's a great example. Thank you, Tom. Okay. That's a great but then example. If, if it's an accessory building and no other structure, then if, if there's no other structure, can a building be accessory? So it's an accessory too. Yeah, what's an accessory well, too? Well, accessory to the, the storage yard. Or it becomes... I guess if you have restrooms, yeah. the storage yard yeah. staff... Yeah. I wouldn't really... It's not accessory to another building, it's accessory to a use. Right. I see what you mean. Yeah. But thank you, Tom. That's like we also have like strawberry stands uh, in parking lots that happen once in a while. That's uh, starting. <coughs> is that a CUP that would, though? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, yeah. That was a CUP. The ones that that continue each I mean, year. That's yeah. temp. But it's temporary. Yeah. It's not a permanent. Yeah. It is a permanent CUP. They have it on. <coughs> they have it temporarily and each year. And it's right, not but it's not a permanent fixture. It's and it's right. not non-conforming if it, it has a there CUP. It doesn't closed. Right. But, but the contractor's storage yeah. yard of storing equipment, being able to store outside equipment where that's not allowed, where there's no other use but they park things there, that, that's a great example. And is that the type of non-conforming use. And I, I see that it's also that's the same thing as I wrote in the and I, there's going to be redundancy in that. This this was a complicated <laughs> exercise. Well, that's a, I mean, I don't know that it actually hurts anything or makes it more confusing to have it listed there as well because it, if I remember it, it we'll, we'll get to it as we go through the questions, but it's basically saying the same thing. It, it didn't differentiate really from what was being said before as that goes. I, I mean, I can I reword really this. The questions are <coughs> certainly not meant to be the ultimate wording. It's just what, you know, to try and get it, ask the commission 
what do you want to do in a situation such as Tom just described? Okay. Do you, is that, should that go on indefinitely? There's no investment. There's no building there. There's. So does this prevent a building in which there's a non-conforming use from being reconstructed or expanded? Sure. It would prevent the use from coming back in, the non-conforming use from coming back in the way it's currently written. I, and again, these, the language is in here to have a jumping off point because you need something to branch from to discuss, not because I thought that this was the best way to go. Or if you're wondering how staff may use it at the counter, we would look at something like the subsection. You have 1764030. That says uses. Then the next one says structures. And then the next one says lots. Well, we would understand that that's the lead in for the entire paragraph. So we wouldn't apply a building thing to one that's talked about uses. Does that make any sense? So. Because that's not the uses paragraph. That is, I'm sorry, that is the uses paragraph. It's not the structures <coughs> paragraph exactly. or section, I should say. So it would only apply to vacant lots because if once yeah. a structure got on there, then it would move to the move to the structure. What I'm saying is a staffer would see this non-conforming uses and say, well, that doesn't apply to structures, so I'd go down here to structures. Right. Then we don't need to have it in the top. So that's that's how staff would use that. You wouldn't apply something that really isn't applicable. I mean, so that <coughs> what, that wouldn't need to be in the top. We just need to make sure that it's in the structures section. Yeah. Basically. Well, the T for structures should be in the structures section. The T for uses should be in the use sections. And that's how staff uses a document, and that's how the public is taught how to use the document. It, and again, I and think. they'll challenge me. They'll ask for interpretations if they think I'm wrong. And we have a process for that. So would it be better that we used abandoned, intensified, or the space, as Art DeBolt was saying? No, because this right. relates to, to the use. The use. Okay. space was a separate, Okay. that was a separate question. It actually belongs in subsection E, and I actually see I've got it in there somewhere else, too. Um, kind of looked at a number of ordinances and tried <coughs> to put things down, and as I said, I'm, I'm sure there's reorganization that needs to be done in duplication but more to guide the ordinate guide discussion so we know what to bring back as Steve said. So if I have a non-conforming use, if I have a cross fit in the new industrial zone. Um, no, right. Cross fit in the industrial zone now where it's no longer allowed and that building burns down and the building is reconstructed. Do you want to allow the cross fit to go back in there? No, uh, we saying burn down because there's there's language in here later on about the percentage of the, uh, if it's burned. That's that's dealing with the structure being non-conforming. Okay. That's not dealing with the use. Right now, this is a conform. The the building conforms to all building codes, all setbacks, all everything, but it has a non-conforming use in it. Okay. For whatever reason, <laughs> the building is reconstructed, torn down. I mean. Do you want the use to be able to come back? Well, let's say that the use is, let's say, let's make it a little, let's just say it's going to be expanded. Let's just say the owner of the building decides he wants to go ahead and add, he wants to expand the footprint of the building, and, and he's got, he meets all the, all the other requirements associated with, you know, all the other <laughs> development standards, and he can, he, and he wants to expand the size of the building, then does that mean this guy gets a notice? And let, I mean, and let's just assume that nobody's being put out in the expansion. They're just going to expand the footprint and then, and uh, of the building. Based on what we discussed 
last month, then they wouldn't be able to. That no. non-conforming use would not be able to go back into. No, no. Let's say they don't. They're not leaving. They're just going to do. A, they're just going to expand the building, and nobody's going to be put out. They're just going to add square footage to the building. But that's well, we'll intense. Fine. <coughs> we'll no, the building that. owner, not the non-conforming use. Just right. the building owner decides. The guy, the guy who owns uh, the brew house, right, decides that. And let's say we have a non-conforming use in that center. And let, so let's say, and, and let's just say it's the brew house. Okay, we'll pick one, even though it's conforming. Okay. Assume that it isn't. So you go to the other end where the Kumon place is, and the guy has enough room, meets the park, and he's going to add another store. Right. Can he add that store? It's not going to affect any other any other use in that. It doesn't affect any of the tenants. He's he's got a. a Wall. He's now going to just add to his building another. Right. Is it a non-conforming use, though? Where I'm not talking. No. No. Just no. We're talking about the building. It's altering the building, and there's a non-conforming use in the. This says that that the non-conforming yeah. use shall be allowed to remain, provided the building that the non-conforming use is located in is not expanded or reconstructed. Well, and I think saying. probably are that when I wrote it, whatever I took it from was probably not thinking of a multi-tenant building. It, it was thinking of... But just about every commercial building generally is a multi-tenant building. I mean, and, and I think <clears throat> we solved that by saying the footprint of the non-conforming use can't be expanded. So I think the word expanded can completely come out. I think that's just a red hair, you know, the, yeah, whatever. Okay. I, well, from a practical point of view, irregardless of what the use is, an expansion of a commercial property would come to the commission, commission versus the uh, site plan review, irregardless of what the use is. I'm not, that's not what we're yeah, talking yeah. about. We're yeah. talking about a non, should, should a non-conforming use be allowed? I, I'm, I'm good with it not being abandoned, with it being abandoned, not being abandoned or intensified, and, and it, all of that, I guess, I'm separating the non-conforming use from the building itself, okay, because that it, it, the building is conforming. And if, if and, and again, like if it, let's say they have the fire, because we're going to talk about, is it 50% of the, of the structure is, is destroyed, or is it 100%? If it's, let's say it's 50% is destroyed, and let's say that the 50% that's destroyed is not where the non-conforming use is located. It's where a conforming use is located. And so they're going to reconstruct where the conforming use is located. Does that mean that the non-conforming use has to be tossed because the building is being reconstructed? And it doesn't affect him in any way, shape, or form? Good question, good counsel. Sorry. Can yeah. you have, you can't have two different uses within the same, I mean, uh, 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 there's a rest it's a restaurant. It's the use is a restaurant. If it's a CrossFit, the use is a CrossFit. You can't have a restaurant with two different uses within the same. Well, fitness yeah. places always try to say that the front of their building is a store, and that's the retail portion. You cut you off the yeah, part. we get a lot of that. There's there's people that run multiple, but you just yeah. had a dentist. Yeah, could tell a deli is a you is a. You have a dentist that's on there. Yeah. Tons of buildings that have multiple. Oh, yeah, because can tell a deli. What's the, what's the, yeah. what's the, what's use, the dentist? The, the use says restaurant, yeah. So there is, I mean, there's one use on the on the On the permit. permit. Right. Tom, what's the dentist now doing? You had a dentist. Oh, yeah, we have a dentist that runs a plumbing service out of his nice. dental nice. office. Well, what's that's on the permit? <laughs> uh, he has a permit for the dental office, and he has a permit for the plumbing. Within the same? Within the same permit. unit. It well, wait a minute. Okay, okay, something okay, well, that, see that? Okay, that, now that's different. You are you are all talking the unit, the space, where the use is located. What's set? What's written here is the building that they're located. Just think. Just broaden the. You have the you have the city offices next door. Just think of it as if it were a business. You have the building department and all these offices in this section of the building. And at the very end is the police department. So let's just say the police department is non-conforming, okay? And you have a, a fire in this part. It doesn't touch the police department. 
you have two uses in that building, one of which is non-conforming. And let's say that this half burns, doesn't touch the police department. You're going to come in and reconstruct the, the city part over here. Is that the excuse then to throw the police department out? No. OK, well, that's what it says right here. No, I think what we were talking about, if no, we were talking about. It says about what it says right not I'm trying to deal with that. No, I understand. Right we, we were talking about not putting an amortization. I mean, the biggest thing is not putting amortization and letting, letting society dictate when that. No, but th this, is a, this isn't amortization. This I, is it. Well, it sort of deals with that because they're talking about booting somebody. You, you're talking about taking, at some point, you want to take a non-conforming either use or property and make it conforming. But but if you were to flip that around and say the police department was, you, as an example, you said that that was a non-conforming, but it didn't get touched. Let's say it was non-conforming and it did get touched and they decided they want to rebuild and expand. That's what I'm saying. I don't, no. I don't think we want no. to allow I, it. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we would do that. Right. Uh, all I'm saying is I think they're wrong. I don't think we're mixing the use with the building in, instead of it should be the space in which the, the it's the it's the, the space within the structure that the that the uh, non-conforming use the non-conforming use is housed. In other words, the whole building is conforming. Right. It's right. the use that's the that's problem. That's non-conforming. Right. Right. And and the way that it, the language here is is that it talks about you have to read a if it's abandoned, intensified, or the building that the use is located is not expanded or reconstructed. So I, I agree. I think we should take the expanded out. The expanded out, because we deal elsewhere that it, the footprint of the use can't um, expand. And then the building, again, my mind, I was thinking of a single non-conforming use, a single building, not multi-tenant. So I'm really, when talking about reconstructed, I'm really talking about the space, the space in which the yeah. non-conforming use is, is not reconstructed. I mean, I, would, yeah, I don't mind expanded or reconstructed, but just define clearly that what we're talking about is the space Taking that the non-conforming use is occupying shall not be, because that's, that's what was here before. The guy expanded right. his space within the overall building. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that, what we that, don't that, that's what you don't that's want. That's what we don't want. And so... The building is okay. Yeah, it's 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 expansion within the building that's the problem. So it's expansion of the non-conforming the space that the not and that might be the whole building if it's if it's a <coughs> if, if that non-conforming use is the tenant for the whole building. Right. Okay. <coughs> then we still want his space not expanded. That still allows right. the owner to expand the building, but okay. he can't expand and then let the guy knock the wall out and move next door. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. I know where you want to go on the the space of that, where the non-conforming is not expanded, and then it does the same apply to reconstruct Yeah, the, the, same, the same way, yeah. If they yeah. reconstruct it, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea. If you want to get them out, okay. this well, is the, oppor in, this is the in opportunity. It, yeah, in but in, a, in, an instant, in, an, in an example where it, it burned down. Well, that's the next thing we're going to talk about. I mean, do you, do you we, but, we get down there. <laughs> okay, yeah. so, I mean, from that aspect, for them to be able to reconstruct and put that non-conforming use back in yeah. because it wasn't kind of like not their, their fault it was yeah i mean you're 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 now going back to kind of they're almost being well that's that's yeah maybe we need to discuss that you know is that what we want to you know what I'm, i think expansion is one thing reconstruction is another reconstruction that's, that's kind of in, in indicates it's out of everybody's hand and there's a difference i think well maybe there's maybe there isn't a difference between reconstruction and remodel I mean, re reconstruction due to an unforeseen event versus a remodel because you want to make it right. look, you know, nicer. And we, we talked about that too—that that part was okay to actually, the, yeah, yeah. you know, make the facade look nicer. But what does the reconstruction relate to? Does it does it relate to I don't like the way this looks, so I'm going to tear the whole thing down and rebuild it, or is it something out of the individual's hands that caused the reconstruction? I mean, or do we natural disaster, do we an, earth, it down that low? An, an earthquake. I mean, what? Where, where how, how defined do we go on this? Well, generally, what would the commission like to do on it? I mean, decide it at matter? the time. Does decide at the time. <laughs> 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 they can come in for a CFP <laughs> and help <laughs> out. <laughs> um, well, 
I'm you know, I, my energy. I, I don't know, but I mean, that that's, yeah. As, just as an example, there's a natural disaster, earthquake, a flood, or something. And now, because that happens, we're basically now saying that that non conforming use is gone. Mm -hmm. Where before we were saying, look, we're not going to put a time limit on it because we want the economy basically to decide when you're going to leave. So, I. Yeah, I hear you. That's, uh, that's a little dicey. Shall we? I guess we could discuss. We either discuss that, maybe vote. Is it vote on that? What's, what, get a consensus on mm -hmm. what if, if it's a in, in, an involuntary. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's uh, reconstruction. What, what would that be? An involuntary. How does the commission feel if it's voluntary? Reconstructed. Whereas for non-conforming, they're, they're tearing it down. Yeah. No, I'd say I'd say no. Yeah, they don't agree. Yeah. Well, really, come back. I thought we made that decision last. Yeah. yeah we that, that's the remodel part yeah. that I talked no. about. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. The remodel was okay, but to a degree. But this is yeah. We said they couldn't tear down and rebuild. Down and rebuild. No. We said no. Yeah, we already said that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We were talking They're about the little house on the corner over there. Right. Yeah. And we said if they tear it down and make another house. No, but if if the if the house it we had the earthquake and the house. Then well, I was leveled, you know, it's like. Then I can't yeah. feel like. <laughs> no, I, but that I mean, up later here, though. We discussed that later tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's later on. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, no, if they do it, uh, no, if they do it voluntarily, but yes, if they do it involuntarily. If it's a result of an involuntary. Involuntary. Act, involuntarily. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Passes. Like that. Next. Next. So the original question that I had was, does it matter if it's a non-conforming use of just land? You still want that to be allowed indefinitely. And we're going to take the accessory building out of it, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's just land. Right. Maybe, maybe they've got a tiny little um, What would mobile. be a hypothetical there? I mean, what, how could you just have? What Tom Construction said. storage yard. Yeah, yeah okay, I was thinking no, more storage. I, mean, but I kind of feel accessory? like we should put a limit on that. No, no. What, what would they do to change that? Get their, get their equipment off of there. No, I mean, in the past hypothetical was if the building was no, demolished to rebuild. No, we're not talking about demolishing or anything. For this is just saying, can it remain indefinitely, or do you want to put a time? Oh, so there's no right? act or, or no, action that happens this is just just indefinitely. Let's take that down to. Isn't that under E? Just farther. Yes, down? it is. It's the same thing. Why don't we wait till we get okay. down to E? Okay. Okay. And then we don't. As I said, I have repeat. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that, here, yeah that's was, okay. Well, okay. Good Anybody have questions on? Okay, so B is changing to another non-conforming use that you can change to a different non-conforming use if it's more restrictive. Um, and right now, the code says, I think our code even says that that it can get if you get a conditional use permit. Um, yeah. Do you want them to have to get a conditional use permit or an administrative use permit that we adopted at the last um, meeting if they're changing to a less intense non-conforming use? I think, what, I think, I, I think so, because I think you got to determine right. what is, and that's where I was saying, what is, I have, you know, when you get into intensity, that's there one person's know. idea of intense might yeah. be another one, but then also, all these uses are on a table. We have all the uses in the in, in, in the in the table in our code, and it would seem to me if is as long as they are in on in that table. I, I don't know if that's if this is making sense. That if it's a it'd be on the table it wouldn't be in the right column though. Like or you take Monty Collins. He's residential now. His use is industrial. He's a non-conforming use now. Right. Uh, yeah. So you want to? Yeah. I, I would I, say I, we we the I lesson we keep it, but definitely come to the commission. I think yeah. It's CUP. Okay. I think it's CUP. Yeah. 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 And then you, you, we have to, you just have to decide. If that, that right. Okay. All right. Monty's uh, is also a good example of a non-conforming structure on property because if you look closely at his buildings, they are modular trailers that he got. Right. Mm. And they've been that way for probably 30 or 40 years. <laughs> or longer. So that's one of those things where should we ever crack the whip and made them build a real building? 
it's just another example for you guys. Well, the bill, they, I, I understand they're, they're out of business or they're. Yeah. So He's winding down. They're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's just another example for you guys to understand why you may have wanted codes certain ways and not certain ways. Yeah. Like, Okay, I think we've already answered the next question that they can make structural alterations as long as they're not expanding the non conforming use. Correct. Right. Well, we <coughs> said that last month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, non conforming use may not expand its square footage beyond that for which it was legally approved. So that gets right. the whole issue, you can't expand mm -hmm. it further. And once the non-conforming use is terminated, discontinued, abandoned, occupancy afterwards may not revert to that non-conforming right. yep. So now we come to the non-conforming use of land. And, and it can either be, it can stay forever, or you can then put a time period on that. If we put an amortization, is that got to be generic across all of LASA for any projects? Or can that be specific for certain types of projects? Like, like in just zone, industrial or, or, or a different, in a different zone? Mm -hmm. So I'm, is this a reasonable basis for a zoning ordinance? Rational basis? That's all you need. I've got a... You a, can't say I like him so he can stay and I hate yeah. her. So she's got to go in a year. I but you can, you know, mm -hmm. something in an industrial. Well, I'm looking at how we've had things in the past in like Arrowhead, how that work would work with another area if we changed how we do that. How would that affect them, for instance? So this is just the land we're talking about. This is just the land. land. So it's, yep. you're, you're talking about like a bare, just a bare piece of land that somebody, in, you know, is in nonconforming and using it for maybe RV storage or... Yeah, I've got it down here. It has to either be storage or agriculture. That's all you can be doing. That's about the only two things. We don't, like you said, we probably don't even have this, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't be addressed. But what if it's, I got a question here, what if it's, you don't want to do this if it's, if it's say, ancillary to an approved use? Let's say, and, and I got to thinking about, you know, let's, let's say that there's a vacant lot and it's close to own or owned by an approved business, but the or an approved use, but the lot they're using a lot. Let's just say for storage. But that lot by itself, that that's a non-conforming use. Now, I, and I got to think, well, where would that ever be? And I'm thinking like Ganal Lumber. Okay, you have the building itself and, and where it's at, and that's all conforming and approved, but then they utilize another lot behind, behind it across the street mm -hmm. for storage and all of this stuff of their, of their lumber. And But is that non, we well I don't know, but if it were not, if, it, if that were the non-conforming use, if that, if that were a non-conforming use of that land, but it's part if of it's their adjacent, business. Yeah. So I don't know, I'm just, not that it would ever come up, but just trying to, um, you know, you don't want to just, you don't want to just. Remember, the code's a living document. If you say right now it can stay forever, problem. and then a problem comes up, and say, hey, you know what, we really do need some sort of amortization period. Or we can do it the other way around. Put an amortization, and if somebody has an issue with it, they can come to it and you know, go the other way. We decided to have the market control with regard to the use uses and businesses. Why wouldn't we? Why would we not have that apply to a, a use of land, like a storage lot? I mean, again, because there's with the a structure and a business, you've got the more investment than you know, I've got a from tomorrow to appointment. Not. It's just an argument. I, I have. I would let the market dictate. No, no feeling either way. On this. Well, it gets into what we talked about vacant lots. We don't have that many. I was just saying. I, I think we could I mean, probably we're just, talk about something that, that. I think we'd probably just leave it as is because I don't. I don't know that it's necessarily going to have to be addressed. And if it does, I guess we can. 
address it at that time? Then we just take out E, and it will automatically fall into non-conforming use. This shall be allowed to remain. Done. Okay. Can do that. Next. Okay, so non-conforming structures. Um, now, again, we're talking about a structure that does not meet your development regulations. That, that's what we're talking about here. It did once. It once upon a time, it, it did. did. Right. Everything we're talking about non conforming at one time, it was legal. Was legal. If it's not legal, it's never legal. Right. Okay? Right. <laughs> um, Done permitted, that's not part of it. So the non conforming structure can stay as long as there's no alteration, enlargement, or addition to any building or structure. Um, and then it can't be allowed to change to any use which would increase the non-conformity of the structure, such as changing an office building to a medical building if there wasn't sufficient parking. Let's say it didn't even have enough parking for office. <coughs> you go to medical, then it's got a bigger deficiency because medical has a higher parking standard than normal office. So you wouldn't allow um, the non-conforming use of the non structure to change. Or I guess it would be any use for non conforming structure. Yeah, that's I got here the wrong section. <laughs> we're, we're mixing the uses in the and the, the So it would just say use of a non conforming structure shall not be allowed to change to any use which increase the non conformity. Right. On the going back to A, mm -hmm. I read that there's no alteration, enlargement, or addition to any building or or, or structure. Um, the alteration is not necessarily maintenance. No, and that's covered in C. All right. When we get to C. Um, We talk about enlargement, but you know, I've got it could be either an, an increase or reduction in the building, you know, in in the the, the square footage. You, you know, you could they could reduce the square footage as well, in order to. I mean, in order to add parking to yeah. intensify their use. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that is that something you want to do? We talk about just enlargement, but let's well, but just. But then it wouldn't be a non conforming structure. If they alter the structure so that it then meets the development regulations, it's no longer a non conforming structure. If, let's say, they didn't have sufficient setback or parking, and they take off, and, and Gardena actually made um, a store that was going to be a um, Dollar Tree. They made them take a third of the building off so they could put parking in. Right. And, and but then it became a conforming, conforming structure. Right. Parking was conforming. The building right. was and it was only a fifty cent tree. Well, yeah, sixty six okay. and a third cent tree at that yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. But so then that section doesn't apply if they're reducing. If they're, if they're making it conforming. If they're making it conforming, then. Yeah. Someone pulled a permit <coughs> to shrink the building, increase the parking. We what if we're still not conforming when it got done? Yeah. What, does, what if we're still not conforming when it got done? Oh, you probably wouldn't approve. You couldn't approve it. Yeah. I can't approve it on. Oh, I got you. Okay. I couldn't approve it. Right. I'd say chop off a little bit more, and then I'll take you to the commission. Okay. I've seen that done with an industrial building where they establish parking inside the industrial building to meet their need. So we answered that question? Um, I we well, I think we didn't get to the question. I yeah, let's do that. Okay. So so let's change it to conforming use. Right, so if you have a non-conforming use of a non-conforming structure, and you want to change it to a conforming use of a non-conforming structure, do you want the limit that it cannot intensify the non-conformity? I got a note here, Steve. I don't even know what I was saying. Well, did you I put know what this you're saying, Tom, or did I put this? No. 
Oh, you put that. If they reduce it to, <laughs> <laughs> they're bringing a non-conforming yeast into conformity, <laughs> but in a but in a non-conforming structure. Well, no, but they, you couldn't because you couldn't permit if it's non-conforming. No, she's talking about the the structure stays the same. I'm not going to mess with the structure, but the use is non-conforming inside the. Inside this non-conforming structure is a non-conforming use. So now, if there's a chance to make the use not conforming for the zone, right? But the building is still going to end up non-conforming. Do we want to do that? But that's not I this question. No, that is what that is. I think it is the question. I still we don't. You don't want to change the non-conform. You don't want to increase the non-conformity. So what somebody would be saying there is, well, but I'm going to get rid of the non I'm going to get rid of my industrial use in the commercial zone, but I'm... I'm going to bring in a... But then you say, but it has insufficient landscaping or setbacks. That, that, that causes the nonconformity on the building. So I just have a note. Which is more important? Is it more important to have a use, to have a conformed use, conforming use, or more important to have a conforming structure. Well, it depends. I, uh, yeah, and I got a question mark and I put CUP. Let them come in and... <laughs> and then you can look at it on yeah. its merits. Yeah. yeah. So CUP... Yeah, because... because yeah, I mean, you, you're... Because you're, 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 if it's just some landscaping or something like that, I mean... I mean, that, that's the problem with this all along. <laughs> yeah. But if it's noise or hours of operation... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to decipher between nonconformity of structure and use. Yeah, which is, it's yeah. Keeping in mind, that we keep in mind that we created all these problems for these poor people. Right. <laughs> but there's, Changing a, their there's so many examples of these things that have come to you. You've had parking lots where the parking spaces weren't light, even wide enough. Right. And therefore, is that your opportunity to make sure they have all nine foot wide parking spaces? But then the count goes down yeah. to the number of parking spaces. Right. right. But at least you had a say in it. Right. And you knew what the uses were at the time when you reviewed it, especially with the multi tenant building. Yeah. It yeah. gives you a chance to consider that. Yeah. And all these examples we have, <laughs> <laughs> these are all real. Um, the names are changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> So that takes care of the next question also. Well, should parking be brought into conformity? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> That's that hard in this town. That one is talking <laughs> about if you have a house that has one, a oh, one car garage. Yeah. Yeah. That's and a question they want from to Tom. Expand the, they want to expand the house. Do they need to have a two car garage? If they're building a mansion with a one car garage, is that okay? No. So it just was, mm -hmm. it just well, that doesn't mean code. It, yeah. Well, so it's a non -conform. It did at one time. It did at one but time. But it's a, a conforming enlargement of the building, but the, it's still a non Increasing the bedroom That's expansion. Increasing the bedroom count. So that's expansion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, ex that's expansion, though. We covered that. Yeah. We can, you can remodel. If you're going to expand, then you've got to go yeah. We think, we think, yes, you have to yeah. bring it up to cover yeah. the Yes. You mm -hmm. do. The, the they minimum do, enclosed yeah. parking spaces yeah. for yeah. They do yeah. that in, uh, in Belmont Shore, I think. Yeah. They have a huge issue with Doesn't that. any yeah. new model have to come up to code, like, such as ADA and all the other codes? One section, no, uh, no I thought, I, had to put it in I put code. in another ordinance. I thought I put it in here, but I guess I didn't. I mean, put it in here. Anyway, just for resale value. Oh, yes, I did. I added that a structure shall not be considered nonconforming because of a loss of required parking due to conformance with the ADA. I know right. technically you go below code, but what happens when people want to come in, fix up their building, right. they lose spaces. Right. Because they need that van space, which takes up two previous spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So they're now. Yeah, so their count doesn't, anyone who was approved 10 years ago now has probably two or three less spots. So they're all non-conforming when it comes to public parking. Right. Office buildings have a real big bad problem with this. And we wanted to make sure that was clear that that didn't put the whole building into non-conforming if they're complying with something that became a state mandate outside of right. what the city had imposed. Practically, I agree, yeah. Okay, then we go see, so maintenance, non-structural repairs, non-structural modifications, 
non-structural interior alterations to a non-conforming structure are permitted if they don't enlarge or extend the structure or otherwise increase the degree of the non-conformity. Okay. Um, okay. Facade improvements uh, are not a structural repair. That's fine. Um, then it was structural, so now we're talking about structural repairs and modifications, additions and enlargements. Do you, do you want to allow that do you want a CUP, an AUP? Where would termite work come in? Uh, maintenance. Where it's structural. Yeah, but, yeah facial board replacement stuff? No, 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 structural. Oh, interior. I, well, I, um, it's still not expansion. Come. But it. No, yeah, but she's talking repairs, structural repairs. I think we decided all that was okay. That's right. Uh, we just don't want it to be expand. So structural expand. repair you There's want no in the tent that seat. you're going to exploit that for another use change or anything. When you're re when you're doing termite. So now we're so then D becomes modifications, including additions and enlargements. Do you want to allow do you want to just say no, you can't have that period? I think that's what we said. Or but what if it doesn't increase the nonconformity? I, I or do you want to approve that by a CUP? I think what we were trying to do is what we were saying is by you know going back to not putting a, a time frame on it, letting the market determine. But also we said we didn't want them to expand the nonconformity, so they could they could remodel, they could do those things. But we weren't going to be up for expansion. Now if we decide that we they that we, the CUP, and we can let them do it, I guess, but I think that's what we discussed, right? I thought that was it, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's not for allowed. For are you guys up for that, or do you want a CUP uh, for it, for expansion of a nonconformity uh, pr uh, structure? Well, I, I don't think the nonconforming structure should be expanded. That's what we right. said. I mean, yeah. that's kind of what okay. we, I think that's yeah. what we discussed last week. But a structural week. repair. That's different. We said repairs and remodels and changes to the facade were okay. Yeah. As long as, as, long as, long as, as, long as it didn't expand. So, maintenance, as as it didn't repairs, non-structural modifications. Shouldn't, you shouldn't need, they shouldn't have to come in for a CUP. And non-structural interior alterations. No. All those are okay. That's yeah. Right. Um, so, repairs were just not differentiating between structural I'm just thinking of like in the apartment area, you know, because we've changed our setbacks and stuff and all of that, every building is non-conforming. Non -conforming. And I was just happened to be over at one today that I was looking at. It was really interesting. And I'm, I'm looking at this building and the termite work has been done. And here's a big old post structural for, you know, big, it's holding up you know, another big beam that's going across, and they, they had to replace it. And uh, I'm going, well, that wouldn't be allowed. After I, when I, in reading this, you know, that, that's a structure, that definitely is a structural repair. And uh, you would, you know, you wouldn't want to have to come in for a CUP to make a, no, I that would, you no. know, to make a repair on the building. You know, so you're not expanding anything, nothing's changing. Right. Yeah, I don't think we ever went there. Yeah. Okay, so no additions or enlargements, um, modifications. So that take gets rid of, I think, basically all well, the modification Well, modification again, modifications that enlarge. Don't, don't. Yeah, I mean, you can have a modification that doesn't enlarge it. You can change the facade. That's a modification, right? Well, it specifically says structural repairs do not include okay. All right. exterior right. improvements yeah. such right. as we'll facade improvement. All right, good. Okay. Because right. you wouldn't want someone to keep their property looking like 1954. Right. right. No. You don't want to de incentivize No, that, right. Yeah. That's in the. Unless that style returns. <laughs> right. It has a way of recycling, doesn't it? <laughs> Mid century modern. <laughs> I love that. It's, it, you know, it's just like the Madera Center. He had a fire. Mm -hmm. He remodeled. 
decided to upgrade it a bit. And it looks nice. Yeah. Um. Okay, can a residence, I'm sorry, we may have just said that. So residents cannot add on if it trigger, um, if they don't have sufficient parking. Correct. Right. Resident, right. Residents. Right. No addition to a residence. I got 400 square foot house. I can't make it 800 square feet if I only have one parking space. Right. You got to bring your mm -hmm. garage into compliance. Is that governed by the number of bedrooms? Mm -hmm. No. Well, parking no, spaces, no. Yeah. Single family Apartments residence are. is two for every okay. single family residence. Oh. Just flat. Apartments are, though, right? Apartments, uh, R3, yes. In the R3, it is. Okay. Yep, they are. Yeah. And it actually would be nice if they used the two car garage to put at least one <laughs> car in, but instead they put the two car garage up for and uh, it fills up and the cars are still out on the street. I, I have a three car garage without a car I in do. it. I <laughs> It does I have a motorcycle. Two garage with two cars there and a few out inside. <laughs> okay, um, we do provide that a second unit can be developed on um, if there's a single unit that is non conforming and the single unit is not conforming because it doesn't meet parking. You can still put a second unit in the back if it has parking for just that second unit. That you don't have to bring the front house up to code as long as you have code parking for the second. Where, where are you? Where, where are you at? That's um, bottom oh, of page bottom. 9, top of page 10. Is that the same lot that we're at? They're, they're adding a second unit, is what you're saying? Isn't that like That's the not fair. Granny flat? Was Why? It, wasn't it under the granny flat thing? Because they're going to provide two parking spaces for the granny flat. They're good. They're not wait, wait, increasing wait. the intensity. But if I add on to my house, I have to bring my garage into conformance. Mm -hmm. But I built a second dwelling unit and I don't? No, be, right. Because your house, you add another bedroom or something, you could possibly have another person in there. Here you're you're providing two extra spaces. You just don't have to bring the front house into conformance. I don't like that. What, it depends what the commission. Where does. where did we where did we do that? We did that already. I thought we. No, I don't think we did. I think we, that was. This is the first time we talked about. Yeah, I think what you're. Well, first you know, of all, you'd have that's to have into a lot the, that's that into the granny flat, where we had to provide for that. We well, you have to we allow. We, we, but they had to have. Uh, sufficient parking. Right, and I'm saying the, the second unit will have sufficient parking. The first one, though. I don't see a problem with that. You is don't. That the I do. The no, unit? you. The the first one stays as is, but if you put on a second unit, it has to meet the code requirement. Right. So you're not they're intensifying not, not, not anything. That I mean, first structure. I'm good. I, yeah, I, but I, it's I, I, still I on the. But is it? But. So, but they're, they're, but they're putting the second structure in conformity. Right. So right. why should the first one be penalized at because that point for not expanding Because we have a parking issue it? everywhere. And but they are putting the parking appropriate. But they're putting the, the parking for in the for the, the addition. Second. Yeah, but I don't know. I think if they, all, can, if they can afford to build another building, they should add another parking spot for the front and Sometimes make it conforming. Sometimes they simply can't. Yeah, that's the, that's the well, next thing. Why is that different than the building we talked about over here that they can't? Make it a, from a 400 to an 800 unless they increase the parking. What's the right. difference mm -hmm. if they add? Because that's the building. building. Because they are adding parking in the back. And it's confirmed. But they can right, expand their lot and put ample parking in the back. That's <coughs> the same thing as on Reagan, the gentleman who wanted to build the unit behind him, the brown house. I think it's brown. If you were to go to Reagan, uh, Baganals, um, Catalina, Go south to home. Oh, yeah. Hometown. Okay. He wanted to put the unit in the back, but he didn't have ample garages. Right. He didn't need so we didn't allow that because he couldn't supply enough. I mean. But she's saying yeah, but that they, they, they would supply for what they're wanting to build. The question is do you want that lot to meet parking for both units? Yes. 
I think so. You do, you do. You don't, you don't. I mean, because why would you penalize? You're penalizing a single family homeowner who wants to expand. They have to add parking. But he's changing but, the structure. But I could. But you're adding a whole other structure but he's not on the, the lot. Structure. I don't see a difference. I don't know why you would penalize totally a single a family. No. The <laughs> second structure, <laughs> if I had a, a large enough lot, yet I had a single garage, and I, want, and I couldn't build onto mine without conforming or building an extra garage, I could just build another one in back and add a couple that way. Now I have a larger house for myself. Okay, and so you let's take so parking, but you can't. You might not be able to. The only way you might be able to add parking for the front one is to tear it down and redesign, re redo the or entire thing. Or because I have a lot, I can expand backwards. Okay, so let's just vote because yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't okay. Want to be. Okay. the question. Okay. The <laughs> question is, if somebody is proposing to build a single, I'm sorry, a second dwelling unit, they have a big enough residential lot to build a second dwelling unit. Do you, that second dwelling unit has to meet? today's parking standards. Do you want that first unit, the primary front house, to then be required to make sure it meets today's parking laws? Okay. All right. And you would have this in Carrier Row. You don't have to actually add a garage, you just have to have a space, you have to provide a space. In some sense, the garage may not even be big enough to be a 20 by 10 spot. Yeah. We don't know. It's whether you want it conforming or not. Conforming, the totality of the building conforming or the parking conforming? The parking. Okay. Yeah, because no room is spot. Yeah, You're we, talking to town that's already impacted with parking. Know. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm saying you don't have to add a second garage. You can just make a space. No. A carport. No. no. Not in the R1 no. zone. No, you got to have covered. R1 has to be an enclosed covered. garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you go from a 9 by 20 garage to a 20 by 20. For the front house, but then also. I mean, we have the luxury of being in a small town. Let's try to fo Where would this happen? Carrier in, row. In, in what? Carrier row. With the one. Is there an lines. alley in the back? And, and a all, corner. Line. Isn't that it's, just the and first one? And they're allowed to put a second dwelling. That's the first two or three streets. streets yeah. But are they but allowed to put a second dwelling on it? By just the first two or three streets. Well, the rest of them have two cars. What if all of a sudden, in my area, some of those have big lots? Yeah. That's state law to allow second units in the R1 zone. Yeah. So the so the, the accessory house. And that's what the we talked. That's what we talked about. Okay, let's let's get back because I, I think this is what's we're we're mixing apples here. We we talked about this when when we were trying to comply with state law, with where they where they were allowed. We have to allow the construction of a second unit in an R1 zone. So let's be realistic. There's not going to be. We're not going to allow a second rental unit in an R1 zone unless it's unless it meets all the requirements. We've already got that in the code. Mm -hmm. yes, you do. It's already there. We don't have a choice. That's a state mandate. We have to allow it. Mm -hmm. So we've already. It's not even an issue here, is it? Not for the not for the guest house. No. But we can require them to add more the parking house. for the main house. We've already addressed that, and we should have already addressed it then. And I don't think we have the choice. We have to allow. The, uh, the front house to remain as is. No. What's the state law? I don't think so. I mean, we have we already have a, a we already have you this in the code. No, but second second. Remember, we're in an R one zone. We don't right, allow we're we don't allow a second unit in an R one zone, except that the state mandates that we have to, for, and then we got we got into. 800, no more than 800 square feet, or four, four, we we limited Park. the to size. How much? Oh, well, I'm talking 700, that's yeah. 1738.50. I mean, I, I don't. I think this is one of these things that we're. I, you're not going to put a second unit in, in an R1 zone. It's not going to happen. And if, if you're going to yeah. let them do a second unit in the R1 zone, then yes, bring it all up to code because I don't want the second right. unit. Then, right. Then bring it all up to code if we're going to do that. But we're not going to do that. But we do have to do it <laughs> by state law. It does refer to the Yeah, yeah. Um, looking at what 1764.050 used to say. What, what, what does it say? Because we had to bring it up. Keep going. 
Actually, I don't think the cross reference really worked. Second residential, Second residential units. Yeah. This was a safer parking unit. Last person that wanted a second. Oh, look at number wasn't approved. Four? We didn't approve uh, Four, okay. number nine. Can't remember why. Four, and that the second half. Second half of, yeah. Yeah. Second of the same form. Yeah. The number of parking spaces required to be provided for the main structure on the parcel. So that that's still that's in addition say. to what okay. should be provided. So. Do you provide that parking with the parking, the so. in increase in parking you're doing for the second residence? Yeah. Steve, what about those people? There was a family across from the hospital who was adding, their house was like way in the back of the lot and they added in front just probably three or four months ago yeah. they came, we approved that That's and, R2. and we, oh it's R2. That's R2. Okay. That's not that in that case it allows for multiple units. Right. Instead of you wouldn't consider it a second dwelling unit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On Cherry. It was a <coughs> second or third lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We already say it. Number nine. Part a minimum of one off of one covered off street parking per bedroom shall be provided for the second bedroom unit, second residential unit in addition to the number of parking spaces required to be provided for the main structure on the parcel. Right. It's already there. They got it. Yeah. So we don't even need to. Okay. So, we already so where is that in? If they're going to put the nine. second one in, they oh. got it. Yeah, in, in the code, yeah. So what is it? So they're going to put the second one in, they got to bring the first they one up. They got to bring the first one up if they put the second unit back. Okay. okay. Perfect. Right. Good so. job, Mark. The second unit. So and good. the required <laughs> number of spaces for the main you know. structure. <laughs> You already covered it. Okay. So next, if the building's non-conforming due to parking, if you intensify um, the existing use, you can only do that if the full amount of required parking is provided for the new use. So if you have 10 parking spaces but you need 12 and you intensify that, so you're deficient too, and you add something that needs four more spaces, you can still be deficient too altogether as long as you add the four more. You don't have to fix the existing deficiency as long as you fix what the intensification requires. I don't think we want to carry your deficiency Where was that at? over. That's, Where was your at? that's <laughs> page <laughs> 10, number three. We didn't want any intensification though. I don't believe. It's like carrying your uh, over. No, but I guess she's no, saying. No, it's not. Because you're fixing the parking. You're you're providing the additional parking. So that puts it in conformity? Uh, the, the extra space. The extra yeah, right, space. space. No, the extra s I'm just curious, like, how could that happen? Because if they could provide four more spaces for that, why can't they provide the two spaces if they're short? They, don't they want haven't to. been required. They haven't been yet. required to, <laughs> or right. they're going to remove landscaping <laughs> or, or something. They restripe their parking lot overnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As so many do. That happens. <laughs> it does. <laughs> All of a sudden, you have a different configuration. <laughs> that our par parking spots go from nine by nineteen to eight by something. <laughs> to where the smart car doesn't fit. Yeah. There's some cities I don't even park in because they allow such tight parking spaces. I know I can't get in it ever. I thought they were designed for my older cars because those are tinier. And Torrance, Torrance has a habit of allowing very, very narrow spaces in movie theater parking lots. Mm. <laughs> it's just like, you know it's going to be crowded. Sorting heaven. And you know you won't get your thing in there. So building which is non conforming due to parking. Uh, okay, we talked about that. So do we want to keep we're gonna keep the same let them keep the same deficiency? What we were just talking about on three. 
Some of this is holdover from the old code, too. Um, I'm where we at. Yeah, I, G actually doesn't belong there. Why is, why do we even have four? Yeah, I don't think four needs to be in there. Yeah, why do we have four? Okay. I, I don't, I, I don't, it doesn't need to be no, there. because we're not allowing. Mm -hmm. No. Okay, four's out. Right. Well, it's, it's out because it's already covered. Um, E, I need to find language from another code to finish that off. The idea was there, the structure shall not be considered nonconforming because of condemnation of a street surrounding it. So if property, you know, if the setback gets shrunk or something because there's been a condemnation yeah, of property, to. not fair to the property owner, go, hey, now you're nonconforming and you can't no, expand or do anything there. else. <laughs> but we should <laughs> put more language. In yes, the I realize in seeing this now was something I meant to go back to, but um, we talked about the parking, and G probably belongs. G probably doesn't even need to be in there. I've already covered it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so non-conforming lots just basically says if it was a legal lot, you can, uh, you're not held to the dimensions, but you have to comply t with other applicable requirements unless you get a variance. Wait a minute, before we move on, is this, is this, the, is this something that- Same language it was in originally. But I mean, you were talking about all the lots over in Apartment Row being reduced, so now they're all non-conforming? Yeah, we have a lot of non-conforming lots. Want to yeah, let's, 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 talk, let's, let's, talk, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about that. You have a lot of non-conforming lots because somewhere you up the lot size dimension? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that means that's five foot too short. Yeah. What? yeah, we did that. We did that, they did that recently, actually, in the last, within the last <coughs> 10 years. Joseph which made? Which made everybody, every, every lot, a legal non-conforming lot. We need to change that. Back. That's a policy call you guys can make. That's what pissed. Yep. On the fact that when the zoning code was changed and the lot size was enlarged, all the lots became legal nonconforming. The lot size was shrunk. Yeah. No, when the lot sizes in the, the code, build the build the lot, lot size was expanded. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and, like across the front, it has to be what? 50, is it 50, 60. 60 feet? You're but right. the standard lot is no, 40. No the standard lot is 49 and a half feet. So what was the what was the purpose of that? Except the purpose was for any new subdivisions, you would want to not have 49 and a half feet again. You'd want 60. But then to make the other ones non-conforming, I'm not sure what you ever get out of that. You get problems. I, mean, I don't know what you ever get because no one can modernize. Cars aren't getting any smaller. They need to be a certain width just to get garages on those lots. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure what the, the why you would make those legal non-conforming. You know, it sounds you to me like... You want it to never happen again. I get that. You don't want someone to split their lot into that size again. Right. I understand why the code required the minimum lot size for any new lots. I don't understand why you would go and put this scarlet letter on all the old lots, though. I think this requires a larger discussion and, and, and maybe some staff input, so maybe we should carve that section, carve that section 1764 or whatever it is out for uh, a, a later discussion, because I think it's important. We have a lot of lots in the city that aren't conforming. We probably can't have a discussion with a limited amount of research and staff input that we have. So why don't we move on from this and, and table that at a different time. Yeah, I agree.
Okay, the next one's non-conforming use of land. Again, just take it out. <laughs> um, non-conforming building types. I really didn't know what the commission wanted to see. This is where you have a um, restaurant in a residential home where it doesn't, it's not meeting fire rating standards, it's not meeting ingress, egress Correct. requirements. Assembly uses and non-assembly space. But it did. But how can it, no. how can it not meet that and be a restaurant? How could they even be approved? Shenandoah, Shenandoah well, right? Well, that's, that's, that's what's, but if, if it's, if it is. How is it approved? How, how did it get approved then? No. They must yeah, meet all the fire codes. They, <laughs> no, that, that had nothing to do with. Uh, their issues were strictly outdoor dining issues. So I mean, I, I don't see that. I don't. I, I don't. Uh, to me, it's the. Uh, I mean, just look at uh, the office building. Look at the houses along Catella, that are. Uh, you see more attorney's offices, you see yeah. insurance offices, you see more in office use. Mm -hmm. And uh, why, I, I'm not, and when they unless architect. When they pull the proper permits. Well, you, we, we don't approve that. You, you have, you, you obviously, have, they have to <coughs> all the requirements for, for that business or you wouldn't let them go in there. Today, I would yeah. hope. The dental, we did that with the dental. Mm -hmm. what? I mean, that they want to use a house. Can we just it's architect? Is there, what if they built an office that looked like a house? I mean, why don't we just move this? I, I, into I don't, the I don't, I, 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 I'm not understanding the, I don't understand. Let's just move that. this into the non conforming structure. It's, but that is really a different issue. But is it, it is, it, yes, yes. Well, no, but why is it? A, a residential house does not meet commercial. Let's stop using that example. I'll use an industrial building. Okay. An industrial building that's a warehouse is not meant to have a church in it. Why? Unless it's brought up to building code. But that's use. Yeah, but that's, again, we're getting we're into use. use. Yeah, that's uh -huh. This section is. And they have no, to. You're talking no, you're building types. Non supporting types. building types. Because, oh. because in your building types, there are different types of fire rating walls, mm -hmm. there are different types of um, ingress, egress that's required depending on. The use. Wouldn't our codes deal with that? But that's that's a building, building department issue. If they're not enforcing that code, what's that got to do with the structure? Would it even go to building code if it wasn't a new building, building department? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's where we've had the problem with the bathroom requirements on fitness places. And of course, they have to meet them, or you don't let them in. I mean, I mean, it's one thing we to don't go. don't let them in. <laughs> They're there. People have overridden us. <laughs> well, but no, you but no. But when they come in, they at some point they have to. If, if they're legal, they have to come in and, and, and deal with all of those issues. I guess that's where I'm. If I'm, all they're coming in for is a business license. I, well, have you seen the business license application? No, we don't see them anymore. They're all done online now. Well, you might want to read it. Because you, you fill out when you when you you don't just apply for a business license. You've got the whole the whole layout of the of the structure and everything else and are you in compliance you're that's the zoning, zoning permit, permit form, form. And that, that is for a yeah. first time or not that, anymore. What you're talking about a new Yeah we get those. We see those. Yeah, I mean you're you're going through that whole drill right. at, at, mm -hmm. at some point. And and so for the new business for the new business coming in, you've got to complete that. And, and but some people don't get business license, as we've know, as you know. But you're talking but about you're, new that's business. a different issue. This is about right. non-conforming. This is about existing okay. non-conforming businesses, right? right? So if you just want to take non-conforming building types out of there, well, I can't. I think it's covered under. No, it's not. No, it's a different. Why? Because you can be a non-conforming building and meet all development regulations. But if you're a non-conforming type, then that would be. It, it, it would be addressed by see, the codes. See, okay, let's let's this this. Okay, let me ask Let's focus that. on a church. That's the easiest part. Because that's that's the that's, <laughs> e that's, that, 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 that's the easiest that's the easiest one to pick on. Okay. So a church that meets in a in an industrial building. Mm -hmm. We have okay? that. Okay. And we have that. Okay. 
No. Well, okay, so now, why is that? What is it called? Yes. What are we calling it? Because it is building, building type. A non-conforming building type. And I think that I got. So what? It, got so what should it be? Should be a, here's like here, here's the, here's the church and here's the steeple and open the doors and see all the people. <laughs> yeah. So so, so so we all we all we all think we all think it should look like this. <laughs> no no no. It or have a minaret at the top. Improvement should be made interior to bring it up to assembly use standards. And you would not let them in there unless they met those standards. Correct. Right. So so so, so, the, so the issue is it's, it's a non-issue. Because it's already because, because it's addressed. already because again you're talking about the use in a building. If the building is a conforming structure for the zone that it's in, then the next question is: Is the use a conforming use for that structure? The building type has nothing to do with it, unless you want to get in. I mean, I agree. You, you, the building type has nothing. Who, who are who are we to say that a church has to look like? Uh, no, no, we're not talking not. About. It's uh, and, and or that we're or that a restaurant or that a restaurant saying. has to has to look like. We're not saying what whatever. it has to look like. This has we're nothing to do it with has to be me. built. The building code. But okay, stop. <laughs> a restaurant has to meet certain mm -hmm. building standards, or you don't let them in. If the building that's in the industrial zone happens to be constructed, <clears throat> that it can meet the requirements of a restaurant, the requirements of an, of an assembly, it can meet all of those, and all of those are permitted uses, then it's there. It, it's the use and the, right? It's the use that dictates the, it seems like it's the, uh, the, the, the codes that you're, you're referring to. It's the use. It's not the, the structure itself. The structure has to meet the uh, requirements of the use. Are you talking the, about you think the church we have building that I'm thinking safe? about behind us? Like what? doesn't matter. Yeah. It I could mean, be that one. It could be anything. If you look at... It could meet in the storefront. On, on, it could be meeting... Yeah. Dance classes in industrial buildings that don't require code. But you're mixing... Right. But you're mixing... You're mixing use code. and... You're, you're mixing mm -hmm. use and non conformative use and structure. The use mm -hmm. has to match the building structure code. Okay. So can I ask this one, Steve? In the building right here behind us on city property, every Sunday, there's a church that meets in the recreation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that fall into this type of structure that we're talking that about? That has a, a, that was designed for assembly use. Yeah, okay, so that works that would work. because it's an assembly use. Right. right. So where are the church that you're talking about? How about, about the in the industrial? How about when they have yeah, the bakers? You know it's more or less a restaurant. Huh? Yeah. You know shape. 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 But it meets all the standards. Oh, oh wait a minute. Sizzler, not shaking. Sizzler. We've got to find some more. Okay. We've got to okay. find, now find some getting, better examples. I've been trying to. I, I think through a lot of But it goes question. back. Okay. It goes back to letting the market determine. Now we're going back to saying, you're talking about the. I, I see what you're saying, but we're going back to now letting the market determine whether or not that non-conforming use is, mm -hmm. is okay. This isn't a non-conforming. This is built. Well, he. We're not. We're, no, this is not a non-conforming building, building, building type. Building right, but what you're, but what you're, but you guys are talking about a church in an industrial building. Now you're you're mixing the two together, so you're talking now about a non-conforming use and a non-conforming building type potentially. Why is a non-conforming? No, churches oh, are conforming, conforming use. We're assuming that everything the use is, is allowed. The use is allowed. It just doesn't match the building type. But, but if uh, but if that happens in in a lot of. But I guess I, I guess I really need a building official here to walk you through this one. Okay. Sure. Then let's post, okay. postpone that part. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gonna, I, yeah. This, uh, <laughs> this sounds like somebody's not doing their job when they let them in. Okay. If, if the building, <laughs> if the building is the wrong type for that business because it, because it's not meeting yeah, a, then a then requirement then a code, for a code violation, then, then yeah. it's a code violation. They shouldn't be going in anyway. In the first place. Right. Or they should get a, a citation to, to correct the, the violation. Egress. Access bar, and if they don't, then can be handled by codes. So we'll bring that back. All right, let's talk about that. All right, All right. Yeah. Okay. This is covered also. Now the big one. What do you want to do about buildings that are destroyed? Generally, if you have a non-conforming building, 
usually codes provide that if it's more than 50% of the market value, you can't rebuild it. It's a good barometer. Is it based on market value or just the, 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 right. the structure? The uh, a percentage of the structure, what, what would the value have to do with if, if the building was 80% is 50% destroyed? Because I think it's hard to determine what 50% destroyed is without having it done by square footage or value. Well, I square footage would somewhere be. down the line, someone came up with it. That value was easy to measure yeah. based on there, um, or a fireman's mm -hmm. assessment of damage. Which, with the insurance company, so that probably a fireman's assessment. Every time you see a fire, you say, "Oh, it's about five hundred thousand dollars in damage." And insurance adjusters establish a damage amount as well. So it's it's a, a do, uh, amount that would be usable coming from a reliable source. And we've had, we had a fire, what, two years ago? From two years ago in January. Uh, and, um, and he was able to rebuild. He met parking at the time. There was really no question. <coughs> now if someone... Well, this is a non-conform. We're talking about a non-conforming structure then. That's what we're talking about. Or even a non-conforming use in a conforming structure. But I think we already said we that if it's, that yeah. Yeah. if that's destroyed, the non-conforming yeah. use doesn't come back. But the question is, um, over a certain value, do you want to be rebuilt no matter what? Mm -mm. No. And, and as I said, I've seen some as high as 75, but generally 50. I would probably go with 50. 50% 50 50 of the fair market. 50% of fair market value. Damage or destruction of a structure or use to the extent exceeding 50% of current replacement costs. Um, yeah, see, that fair market value doesn't make sense because it's not based on the structure. It should be something like replacement cost or something like that. Because fair market value brings the land into it. I, don't, I think that skews the, the equation. Land doesn't burn. Right. Yeah, you can have land value that's more than worth more than the structure. They don't want to go with 50% yeah, of really the structure. structure. Like Monty so Collins. It be what? Yeah. Replacement yeah. value of the structure? The structure. <laughs> dean is like every mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you take yeah, the building the where the psychic yeah. is and the affordable care is on Casella and Cherry. If they had a fire, would you let them rebuild? Because they're so deficient in parking. And I think they have two parking spaces, if that, maybe three. <laughs> would you allow them to rebuild? No. Where would you draw your line? Interesting. I can never use my property again because I caught on fire. Yeah, was, that's what I we were just talking about, whether or not it was... Value some sort of a natural uh, yeah yeah we talked not about not that. of their own yeah, doing exactly. versus I want to make the choice and, and rebuild right I mean right. if it's if it's out of their hands are they penalized for that it's a good question I don't I don't I, th I, think I don't think they, not to, I right? think I don't think we they should be personally mm -hmm. not, to. Hmm? not to penalize them. yeah I don't I don't yeah so I mean if it's a fire so I mean, at that Come point, back. do you even put a value? Yeah, fires. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well that, that's, and that's, and that's I mean, the wording has to be such that you can't burn your, your not, building down not, and, you know and rebuild. It's and obviously, they, they got you bigger issues. You can't commit our Senate. Yeah, that, that, we need to put that in. I, I think that's probably a given. They got other issues after that. Claiming insurance, you can go visit them in prison. But. But I, but I think so. So we then, at that point, if if and I don't know what the proper wording because it's not just natural disaster, but it because the fire wouldn't necessarily involuntary be destruction. Invol involuntary. <laughs> yeah. In other words, you does a percentage you demo it yourself? Right. So. Does a percentage even go on it at that point? If we word it that way. Where I'm sorry, I've lost it. Where are we? <laughs> so we're talking about putting a percentage, right, versus a, a value. If if a certain percentage, then you can't do it. Right. But I think we're all in agreement that if it was involuntary, I don't know that we should 
put that percentage on there at that point. If the entire thing gets burned down, not of their doing, and they want to rebuild it, we let them rebuild it, right? Yeah, would you let Ryan You're going to let them rebuild it without complying with the current development standard. That's, yeah. I, I, because of it being involuntary, I, I feel that it should be. If Ryan E. burned down, the entire center burned down, right. would you let them rebuild with that same footprint? The it, old writing? It, it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is terrible. Which one are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Where Nevins yeah. is. Yeah. Great Dane. Yeah. Yeah. Would you let it goes rebuild? back to what you're saying then is that, that if, that if, if, if you don't, don't let them rebuild, rebuild, they get penalized for an involuntary destruction. Yeah, they're, they're very good questions. And there's a couple office buildings after those as well that probably don't need parking that are in that same area. Right. Because you have to. Take that out of the equation. The involuntary destruction doesn't happen. It's business as usual. I know after the round. It's business as usual. We're not even having the discussion. Now just because uh, an earthquake happens and it's, it goes down to nothing, it's not that the structure doesn't need to be built to, to code. That's, I think, under our code, that if they have to rebuild, it has to be built to code. But I don't know that they necessarily need to be penalized for something that they didn't have control over. Yeah. And that's what, that's what you're saying. Their revenue is for that property based on this, the least amount they get for the square footage they have. Right. Once you chop that off, you're playing with that revenue mm -hmm. stream. And, possi and, and, and possibly playing with the uh, idea that they might not even be able to rebuild it. Right. And they've got loans on those properties and deeds, and they've got to service those loans. In spite of a fire, they still have to service those loans. Would I, I just feel in military we should flip the baby? Go. And suggest that if they they come in for a CUP, if they want to build to the old standards. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's. Fine. I think that's why. Though. You'd be able to well, review it. It's a way to say see yes. why. It's a way to be. Why? It's a way to say yes if you want to say yes. Based on its merits of the application. They may change some of their design too to try to meet some code. So they may want to help. They yeah, they have to survive. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine with that. We do have to do that, then the percentage <laughs> saying no, it's a fixed I, percentage. I, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, and, most then, and then it gives you a chance to see what you care about. Do you care about parking, landscaping, or other things? You may give one for the other. Yeah, I think we want a CUP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I like that. Through this. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and is there any limit on it? Is if it's destroyed? I mean, generally, if it's a destroyed less than fifty percent of the value, you just uh, most well, cities say you can just yeah. rebuild. Yeah, I would say don't mm -hmm. do a CUP yeah. even. Okay, that that's why I want to make sure right. we weren't making them right. come in. I, Right, yeah. Well, we, no, 50% of what, the fair market value is staying with Fifth, that? No, I think what you said, Victor, was, was more appropriate. The value mm -hmm. of the structure. Yeah, the, the value. Of, I, I think the improvements on the land, like your property right. taxes. Right. Uh, you know, they, 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 they the replacement they, costs. Yeah. Not, I'm sorry, not, not property tax, but insurance on, on your home mm -hmm. is typically replacement cost of the, dwe of the dwelling. Okay, so it gives them a way to say, look, I, I Let's can't. Just hope the fire department gets there before 50% is burned, or 60%. We need to have a talk with them. Yeah. <laughs> they do. They don't have very far to go. The stars would have to lie. It'd have to be a non-conforming property on top of it all, <laughs> <laughs> or, or structure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next and question. the que one question was, does it matter if it's residential or non-residential? No. no. Mm -mm. Yeah, because Art had the same concern about multifamily residential. He okay. wants them to have the same opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. This next one covers the prior discussion about building types with the fire code issues oh, and right. access and egress. That's all covered right there. Well, I'm sorry, what, is it, what are you referring to as the next one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, They're all XXX. Continuation of nonconformity. 
-hmm. It says building code. Let's put the requirements of this chapter unless the building official. Okay. So you're right, that solves it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't need the building official because we've got it addressed. Yeah. Abandonment. Um, so right now we're saying abandonment is 180 days of non-use. I know we talked about whether that was too short. But before we, we go, go, what is non-use? Is that the nobody in there? Nobody in there. And buildings empty. Is there a difference between a being well, what if it's a for sale for being abandoned and, and, and something being vacant? Well, what? What if they could? I've added to the back. I found language that a determination that use has been abandoned requires evidence of an intention to abandon. So if you've got a for lease sign up there, it's not abandoned. If you're trying to market yeah. your property, I mean, it's not like abandoned. Like the one we were just talking about. The, like the, the one next the old, door. The old writing. Yeah. I mean, it's not abandoned. What if you vacation for six months in some other state? Yeah, we have to have a definition of abandonment. Yeah. Uh, right? That's I what know. she's talking about on the back what? there. But in, no, she, uh, on the back page. There's some sense of great egregiousness that has to occur. Yeah. Intention. Um, abandonment but of our, use. I've never body. thought of abandonment of use of a residential. Okay. Um, I guess if you're a residential and non-conforming, but I would assume as long as there's furniture stored in that house. There was a bunch of abandonment going on when the housing market crashed. But again, intent right. to abandon. Um, the bank then owns it. A and then what I've added in here is that what the city is going to have to affirmatively determine it's abandoned, send a notice to the owner, and then the owner has a right to appeal that to the planning commission. Because I don't, there needs to be some due process for a property owner right. to come right. in rather than just go, well, what do you mean I'm abandoned? And, there's no right of appeal. He's not there. He's going to have trouble getting the letter. How long does it take before a bank, mm -hmm. typically, because I don't know of too many properties that are cash on that people yeah. will yeah. abandon. Yeah. Um, so you have a, a bank or a lending agency. How long do they allow a property before they come in and consider they're going to foreclose? I have no idea. Art can probably better answer that. Say that. Can you? It could be, yeah. I have three people. How long, no. how long it is? <laughs> I said, yeah. the banks typically are a lending fee, typically has the property. Because if you own the property yourself, it's not really abandoned. You're an owner of that property, even if you're not using it. Right. So if you've got somebody who's left, it's going into foreclosure, whether it's a residential or an industrial, how long does it take before they start doing the foreclosure on it. Is it three months, six months, what? Well, the, before they start the foreclosure just depends upon the, the, average. the bank. I mean, when they want to, if, if, you're if you're late a month, they, you give mm -hmm. them, yeah, um, uh, I like to say a month and then after that they would start, but with as many as they had, the banks didn't want to have the foreclosures on the books, so they, you could stay there a year. I mean, yeah. they, would, they would even start because they, they don't want to. They don't want to have the, the loss on the books. So, but you know, you can't really. You know, the banks probably wouldn't have anything to do with it as far as what we're doing. The process takes 111 days, you know, from start to finish, and then. Because I'm looking before at they that start, for the term abandonment. If they're not foreclosing on the property, how do we determine the property is abandoned? Well, they can. You can foreclose on a property and. It not be not be abandoned. Yeah, yes, all, I understand. That's yeah. All time, yeah, no, that I understand. But let's say that the police department abandoned it. Said that. Okay, the, but yet they have a couple chairs in there, but they're really not occupying it, using it, and they just left. But they still have outstanding. Well, in rental pro I mean, I can tell you as a property manager that, you know, if if I'm trying to get somebody out, if they abandon the property, I can take possession. Mm -hmm. If I have a belief of, of abandonment, and for that, you you open the door, and it's either if you see furniture in there, uh, if there's no beds, okay, or f and a refrigerator's gone, and there could but there could still be furniture in there, it's abandoned. If they're not sleeping there, they don't have, you know, you can you can 
safely move in, change the locks, and then, but you can't get just dispose of property. You got a whole process to do for that. But, mm -hmm. but if there's a, if there's beds in there and refrigerator and looks like there's food, then they're still there. But I think that I guess I guess with with this type of a of a uh, and that we're going to have that we're going to put in here. I, my only concern is is that when would it be utilized? It's going to be. I mean, when would we utilize that? You know, and, and, and a, really the abandonment of a, and, and, and unless the, the you know the weeds are three feet tall, and even then that's code enforcement, get it mowed and, and stuff like that. Uh, that's going to come to us. If we're talking about if we're talking about a, uh, it's a non-conforming use that we're you know or a non-conforming would have to be the use that we want out of there. But look, let me go from from another city that um, Gardena has adult businesses and they're stuck there. They annex property and realize they could never get, really get rid of them. Um, those uses aren't allowed in the zone and if they were to close up for 180 days that nobody's coming in nobody actually we have one it's been closed for probably a year now the owner died um, it's just been locked up it's abandoned we would make them come in with proof to say no I, I, I meant that this was still going to be an adult business. We were looking for somebody else to, to run that adult business. That's why the purpose of a, the right of appeal, um, that there has to be evidence of an intention to abandon, so they'd have to, you know, if they can show they've been taking active steps to try and do something, to market it, to, right. I don't know where you market adult businesses. Um, the but on the other hand, if they tore down the building, then you probably say, hey, you didn't mean to put another adult business there. You, you know, the building's gone, everything's gone, now you can make it conform to right. a use that, that's allowed in that zone. If evidence can include taking out your equipment, your furniture, machinery, structures, but that, again, that's not the only thing of abandonment. It's just, it could be that you're a tenant and you abandon, and then the landlord would say, no, but I, I've been trying to remarket it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, you can't draft a code to cover every situation. Right. Right. That was the purpose mm -hmm. of providing, here's some examples. And if they disagree, they come in and they say, no. It wasn't my intent. If you say, so where, what have you done in the past year to market this? Right. And they can't show you anything. Then I'm going to say, no. It's, it's. Right. Is 180 days fairly co common or standard as far I've as I've seen practice? 180 days. I've seen a year. I've seen 30 days, which is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 180 days seems reasonable to me for, yeah. a I mean, true abandonment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're only talking about a use. Um, I, I think you will. That's what about the next question: a non-conforming structure. Would you ever make a non-conforming structure come down? Say nobody's used this building forever. Do you want a longer period of time on a building? Do you, that that was a question I had. I don't know that it comes down as much as it just can't go back in as a non-conforming. No, no. We're now we're talking the non-conforming structure. No, I know. But what I'm saying is, is that. As far as abandonment, abandonment goes on that, if you would, you wouldn't necessarily have. Yeah, if somebody was to come in after that, they would have to build something to a conforming structure at that point if they wanted it after it was bad. Because that's no different than closing one down and saying now if you're going to start a new new structure there. It but has the to be structure conforming. remains. You've abandoned the structure, but the struct the whatever right aid building you're talking about, mm -hmm. it's non-conforming structure. Um, it might Is not it? be. Oh. It might not be a non-conforming. Okay. Structure. It might be conforming. That means all development standards. It doesn't mean parking. Standards? It doesn't anymore. How could it? There's, there's a lot of parking. There's a lot in back. 
Okay, let's say the right aid. <laughs> was well, they only have the, the few spaces behind the behind the so building. Let's just they say have I've got a better place. example, Lisa. Okay. There's actually um, a house on the corner of Cattell and Lexington that's not being used as a house. Has a one car garage. So as a house, it's not even conforming to the code. It's probably been vacant. I'm not going to use the word abandoned. It's probably been vacant 90 days at least, if not double that. There's a better example. And it's zoned commercial. It's but a house. Doesn't meet the development standards for a house today. Right. It's been. Does it meet the abandoned. development standards for a commercial structure? No. No. Doesn't have commercial parking. So then, would you make that come down? Well, send a notice and say, and you're abandoning, mm -hmm. tear down the structure. Yes. Or if you want. So they tear down the structure, and then what? It, and then what do they no, do? No, they would have to bring it up. They just have to bring it up to code. Well, that's, 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 that was what I was getting at. They wouldn't tear it down, but whoever it would have to come up. They would get a notice. They would have to come up to current code at that point because they've abandoned. Is it abandonment or just the code enforcement? Well, let's it's okay. Not but again, let's, let's 180 days. Right. Okay, so let's start with the use of the property because that there's there's it's a two-step thing. You have a use. And you have the structure, right? Okay. So if you have a non-conforming use, and that use that leaves, I thought we said 180 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But can the, okay, like we have the, the the people. Let's just use next door to us here. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is now uh, uh, the the big <coughs> building, the, the company yeah. there, uh, the Yellow Super Page Media. building, Supermedia, mm -hmm. which is abandoned. Which is. Yes, it's now abandoned. Okay. Well, let's say it's well, empty. It's, yeah. it's, em it's empty, it's but, but it's a it's but it's a retail. It's a retail uh, zone. zone right now. Right. So their office tenant has building. left. Are no. they trying to lease it? Trying to lease it. The non-conforming use is gone. They've been abandoned. Well, I guess that's the question. Even if they want to come back in, let's forget the abandonment for an issue. Can they bring in another office use? If it hasn't been abandoned, yes. Okay, so that's, that's my question. Okay, so th then how are they, and are they trying to, we don't know. We don't know. So that's what they'd come with that to the They have a sign out there. They have a sign, on, they have a sign out there for lease and stuff like that. Okay, so and they're I trying. And I wouldn't even pursue an abandonment if it, they had a for lease sign. Yeah, so they have a for lease sign out there, so they're so it's not abandoned. They're, it's vacant. Right. Right. It's vacant, and right. so how long do we give them? And that could take them a year to rent it. Could take them two years to rent it. I mean, I don't know. That it, we could there'd have to that. be it'd mm -hmm. have to be 180 days where after like an intent of a. And let's a, go back to something that. Because having a lease sign or any of that doesn't make an abandoned. Right. That's so that's and not a and vacant. And, and we don't feel abandoned. What I can right. relate so to is vacant. what Steve's I'm talking vacant. about. Yes. The house that Steve talks about makes sense because you have a home on commercial property that if it's abandoned, let's say it's abandoned, 181 days. Well, wait. We've already it, it, that, there was somebody that, well, I saw somebody there the other day when I drove by. Drove That's okay. I'm using but hypothetical. I took him out of the house so I can put this into <laughs> some kind of context. All right, okay, all right. Okay? So I can relate to that structure, okay? Yeah. It doesn't matter if someone lives there. I don't care. I'm just saying I can put it into context. So we take that situation. Do we want to tell them, uh, well, gee, now you're 181 days, so it's abandoned. It's commercially zoned. It's no longer residential housing that's been allowed to stay. So do we tell them, no, you have to tear down the house, or do we tell them you have to build that house into a commercial structure? Well, I think that's the two different issues that Art was talking about. First off, mm -hmm. if you can say you've been abandoned for 180 days. There's there's nothing. You, you Google the address. There's no for rent sign. There's no anything. They're not mm -hmm. making renovations in it to, right. so mm -hmm. they can better it. It's just sitting. And we had this 180 days in there. Then planning sends out a notice saying, we hereby notify you. We consider your um, mm -hmm. residential use okay. abandoned. abandoned. Mm -hmm. You have the right to appeal. You'll have to present evidence mm -hmm. to show. And that, so that would then mean that the next 
tenant that was going to come in, there would be a, a have to be a commercial a tenant. Okay. There's a commercial tenant. Okay. That's correct. So that, the next question is, the, now deal with the structure. Now, yes. the structure doesn't, not because it's shaped like a house, but right. because it doesn't have parking and parking. everything. Mm -hmm. Accessibility for public use. The ADA. So now it has to meet Do the code the more. for commercial structure. You yes. need to bring this up, up yes. to code. Yes, I would say yes. At that point, you then f that just triggers That's the next right. immediately yeah. triggers the next letter yeah. that says the abandonment. So you, the, you have abandoned the use is gone, mm -hmm. and at this and concurrently with that, the the uh, structure is is also okay. non-conforming, mm -hmm. and now I mean, that has the, to be the, brought up to code. It's basically mm -hmm. the two ways that we've dealt with amortization. One is let the market determine, right? The second is. Basically, abandonment says now they have to get it they up have to, to do it. They, mm -hmm. So abandonment well, what, is. But what about the situation it. where we've done this, and now, but the lot is a non-conforming commercial lot. Well, In other words, there's not enough. The lot can't sustain a. a then they come in for a variance. Mm -hmm. Then they come in for a variance. Then they come in for a variance because it's a legal lot. And if they can't meet the development standards, they'll have to come in for a variance. And one of the grounds for the variance will be it's an unusually shaped lot because there's no, you know, or physical case, way the to meet the variance. So it, it and that <laughs> that use is that uh, tiny little dentist up building. Yeah. Um, that's right by the shelter thing. Okay, that never met code. They had to go to a variance and ended up having to go over to the city council to get that variance. So it goes back so to. Uh huh. Yeah, so it would be the same thing. Deemed 180 days is enough, or yes, I do. I or does so. it need to be? I more? think it's 180 days is fine. Can we do it? Yeah, you do 180 day on the. I would yeah. just do a blanket 180 days. It's yeah, only six I, I months. It really doesn't matter. I mean. Yeah. What? Well, either one. Mm -hmm. And they have the language where they can <laughs> not appeal, but they can ask for a hearing. On right. the other hand, and, and if they if they were trying to rent it, they I mean. Obviously, it, it, could take, it, it would take, if somebody's going to rent that as a residence, I, I can see where that would take them a long time to find a tenant. But they have a sign up for Yeah, rent. but that's not abandonment. That's not abandonment. Right. They're actively trying to. They're mm -hmm. trying to rent it. Right. Yeah. yeah. If they, they, they have so no evidence. They're trying to rent it, and they fix it up nice enough to rent it. I don't think anyone has a problem with it. No. The fact is, it looks abandoned. Right. That's the only time you would want to use this paragraph. Right. Well, now that's... I, yeah, that's that's when he I don't know. I don't know. The driveway is dust. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is. And it has been occupied up until I don't know how but long that ago. Just, that it's not like we relate. Don't, I'm not saying they're abandoned. Yeah. Alright, I'm not saying he's abandoned. Yeah, I'm just using yeah. him hypothetically. It's just like can yeah, relate yeah, to that. He's living. coming in to, to make sure that we see that it's not abandoned, that he's doing something. Yeah. Is why he comes in. It's fine, and and if he does that, and if he does in fact, and he can get a tenant, just lower the rent. Right, so we're good on that. You know, right. Low enough, low enough. He'll get a tenant. And, uh, you know, come I got a couple I can probably send. Him. <laughs> <laughs> not for CUP, 180, 180 days. days. Uh, then they have a right to appeal. Appeal, appeal yeah. Mm -hmm. To right. To the right. planning commission right. for a hearing. Yeah. That but I, I don't. I don't believe that. I'm not an advocate of them having to actually tear it down at, the, at that time. No. I, it's just whatever the next they have to come use becomes code. for that property at that given time, it has to be addressed then, not at 180 days. They've right. all of a sudden got a level. No, place. we're not saying no. that. Well, that's what was implied no. earlier. At 180 days, it's considered abandoned, right. and then we go the next step. Right. right. Abandoned and no further use to be made until it's brought to code. Correct. Guy shows up on day 181 and he's got a dozer in his front yard. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, the city said so. Sorry. I've, I've torn a house down. It it's a lot easier uh, in building it, I can I tell you that. I in front of a judge to do it. <laughs> yeah. What about that poor guy who had surgery? Had his house was being watched. All the bills were paid, but they didn't know that he had to go somewhere else to recuperate. And he came home. He was in Florida to recuperate. Came home and his house was demolished. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah, I had that happen in Long Beach. I, I heard that, or I was the landlord. <laughs> no, I, I, have, I, I was doing this is when I was doing escrow work in Long Beach, and uh, I have to go out and do a, a site inspection.
before they start construction because liens start if, if there's material to drop. So they're, they're, so I had to go out and make sure that there was nothing on the property before they, you know, before it closed, so nobody could have any lien rights. And and they were going to demo the property the next day. So I go out there and I'm like, yeah, there's nothing there. Go ahead, we're you're good to go. You know, we closed it. And then <coughs> demo guy, he was one street over. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he demoed the house one street over and I go hey not our fault this is this is our address this is, uh, we we ran everything through on the wrong property and it was uh, that's gonna leave a mark <laughs> I think the last two six to three those, those are um, we don't need those we don't need that and Tom I think asks did you have the non-conforming sign question because I don't think I had that in there yeah do we have a sign ordinance? Uh, yes. Yeah. We don't need that. We don't need to deal with that, do we? Yeah, I think so. We yeah. should be okay. We're good. Mm -hmm. Let's go home. We got another one. We did good. The next one is just the beginning of a, a, of a new discussion. We're, we're not ready to wrap it up. We need some guidance from you. Um, are you ready, Chair? Yeah. Go to the next one. Okay, we'll move on to item 8B, zoning ordinance to allow more flexible commercial recreation uses. Yes. As the Planning Commission may vaguely recall, mm -hmm. we've had an issue with the industrial area having uses that you wanted to corral in a specific zoning area. So you, you adopted a general plan that supported that. Now is your chance to uh, adopt the actual laws and zoning codes that support that. Um, so you're we're, you're going to be challenged with establishing a list of uses and definitions that you want in that area to either be permitted, conditionally permitted, or not permitted. So um, that's the area near the um, off of Reagan, near the post office, where all of those recreation uses are now. It's also across the street a little. Also includes one of the two of the Ganahl properties, um, so it's all of those areas that we envisioned as becoming uh, having more synergy for these types of uses, to where they'd be protected for the more grittier industrial uses. But it still does allow industrial uses first, so it's still an industrial zone, but then it would have these extra uses allowed related to recreation. We're going to ask you questions about classes. We're going to ask you if a yoga class is a gym or is a yoga class a class. Is a gymnastics a class or is gymnastics a fitness center? So we need to go through this exercise to make sure we get this table right for you before we bring it back and finalize as an ordinance. So, uh, and CUP. And, yeah, and what you wanted permitted or conditional use permitted. Remember, industrial parking standards are not the same as these uses. So many of these uses that would want to go in these industrial buildings probably don't meet the park. So do you want to see these first as a conditional use permit, or do you want to give staff the authority of saying yes or no? We think it's better to probably put a conditional use permit on these. It gives you guys a bite of the apple. It also gives you the opportunity to take a look at their circulation for drop-off and other things related Lighting. to whether it's going to be kids or adults. You know, because you may want a different development standard, lighting standard for kids than you would adults. Or if the lot's really deep, like the one place that has gymnastics in it, that lot goes all the way back. Mm -hmm. Would you want to bite at that apple to get conditions in there with teeth about lighting, safety, security, public areas for gathering, parking, speed bumps, yeah. It gives you the chance to chime in instead of just us. And okay. were there any uses that you didn't want, though? Swim schools, um, CrossFit, I think you guys wanted there. Large gyms, would you want a 24 hour fitness to be able to open there? Or that wasn't your intent? To have somebody tear down an existing building and build a gym. So we wanted to have that conversation with you and make sure we're going on the right path before we polish this up for you. And with that, it is a public hearing, so if you could open the public hearing. Okay, we'll open the public hearing. If any of you would like to speak on this matter. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. And then go ahead and have that. Okay. 
I like the idea of having the CUP because it, this isn't a small little thing. This is really something that's going to impact your residents and businesses. So I think it's better that it also come to us so that it takes and puts some of the responsibility on us and takes some of that off of your shoulders. So if um, Sir Speedy turned into a gym, you would want to see it? Yes. If Sir Speedy turned into yoga classes, you'd want to see it? Yes. Uh, gymnastics? Batting cages? Yes. Okay. Hula dancing. Hula dancing. Because yeah. <laughs> we've seen all of Yes, we have. <laughs> as strange as it is, you have experience in all oh, There you go. Right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Tom. So these are some of the things that you've seen in various issues. Uh, martial arts, athletic, one-on-one -on -one team training. Mm -hmm. Like you, you saw that one application come to you. A gym. Maybe you want to say small gym. I don't know. Large gym, not permitted. I don't, I, you know, not ready to give you advice there. Live theater, spa, yoga, schools versus gyms. Do you want a come on learning center to be able to open there? Do you mm -hmm. want after school daycare to open there? No. So those are the questions we have. So if we know you want them as a conditional use, we'll start mm -hmm. developing the table. Uh, of uses, and is there any other use you want really called out? I think the important thing is, is it is at the 24-hour fitness types, the open gym types, uh, where you can get a concentration of people at any given time. That's going to impact parking. Mm -hmm. You know that you. That's what you don't want to have. I mean, I think what we we have kind of settled on for was more they had to have defined classes, you know, with start times and end times. They could la they could have many in a day, but where they have a you know a finite amount of of people that are there, and they can say, yeah, we we have ten in a class or twenty in a class, and the classes they they they're an hour long or they're you know and from th this to this, so you know what the kind of what the parking is going to be, what what the requirements going to going to kind of be, and will it fit into the area? But won't they have to meet the parking requirements anyhow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, versus a, a 24-hour fitness, where if you go down there, you you'd hate to be any other business in that center down there because there's no part. You know, they chew up all the parking. Yeah, they would have to buy multiple buildings. Too. <laughs> yeah. There's never enough parking at a gym, it seems. No, uh, okay. anywhere. There's never enough parking anywhere. Can we <laughs> go so many to people. one more? <laughs> On the term spa, uh -huh. what are you defining that as? What are you saying a spa is not? A uh, Williams, massage entity? What? Yeah, de uh, wood is a spa, actually. I mean, that is a good question to even ask. Uh, it's because of the fact that a, a massage parlor is a, called a spa. A Burke Williams is called a spa. Uh, a uh, nail. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's but the, the nail. Sometimes the general plan <laughs> said permits forms of industrial, commercial recreation, public, quasi public uses. So I think when you're getting into the personal service, yeah. this is like mm -hmm. a spa, a Burke Williams, a massage envy. Yeah. I don't think yeah, that intense. that doesn't fit into commercial okay. recreation. Okay. Okay. I think part of when I first came, when the thir first things we were struggling with was what was a school? Mm -hmm. and, and we were trying to fit these into definitions of schools. Well, if you had a hula instructor, it was a school, but is a CrossFit a school? And that's why we went more to the commercial recreation right. definition. What we'd like to do is come up, you know, with what we determined to be allowed commercial recreation uses. Um, the, the situation there is that health, fitness, facilities, and spas are all one line. But we will change that. We'll change yeah. that. We'll pull okay. it out. Just one. So when we look at the gym then next, Nifty After 50 is a gym. Mm -hmm. However, it has managed to get various insurance companies to allow them to do physical therapy treatments in their gym regardless of whether you're 50, 
20 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a dual role. Are we going to address that too? Because we should look at that. What is a gym versus a therapy? And do you only analyze their primary use or do you analyze that small that segment question. of their use mm -hmm. as well? It's another issue. So, well, that, so everyone has a different thing going on in their business. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many how many people have offices where they, I don't know, store historic vehicles? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, Why are you, how many you industrial <laughs> parks Why are you um, looking at me? store their personal <laughs> RVs behind you? Yeah, yeah. She left. No. <laughs> I'm done. Give her So it would be that was something I'd like to know more about. Um, yoga. We need to define how yoga and CrossFits those type things fit together. How are they? Are they so, classes, or are they a gym? A gym. Yeah. So it doesn't I, matter. But yeah. gyms offer cl I mean, gyms offer classes. Too. I, I yeah. think at least they offer yoga classes. The yeah. distinction I've seen since. I've been here, and I think this was one of the first things, <laughs> to, um, is when it was where it's just classes at designated times, the commission's been more willing to do it because you can put time limits on, and you can say, you can't, okay, this is when the industrial's really heavy, so maybe no classes between 11 and 3, and you can have morning classes, and you can have afternoon classes, Versus a gym, yeah, where five hundred people at one time. There are people coming in and out, and you're not coming at a set time. Or we can require there has to be a half hour break between classes. So, well, with parking. Well, we've but, had that already, again, though, behind the hospital with that one piece of property with that guy that wanted to put in in the uh, right. The one -on -one that's training. different than a gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, we require different hours. Where hours. there's you can't mm -hmm. control, so even if a gym did physical therapy, it, you've got people coming and going, and you can't control. Mm -hmm. Can't control the. You time. can't control the number of people coming in, the mm -hmm. parking issues, well, where they're going to overflow to. That's just been See, my that's experience in, a in gym sitting with and a medical yes. use. That's got to be defined better. It does. It really does. Yes. And, um, the issue we've had with these fitness places is they can change overnight. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't if somebody's saying, hey, you're not using it for three hours, can I use it to run my business in it for right. your downtime? And all of a sudden you have impacts that you didn't know about. Mm -hmm. It really isn't about the use for you guys, it's about the impacts of the use. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to define the impacts of the use separately. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, does a yoga class have impact? Not if it's in a thousand square foot building, probably not, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a class or you call it a gym, if it's a thousand square feet, I don't know what kind of impacts it would really have because it doesn't have much occupancy. So we'll get into that and bring that back to you. Um, were there any spe other specific questions you wanted today? Um, on this side? Yeah, we got this, the CUP thing. You kind of yeah, they sounded, like CUPs. Okay, so um, they know the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that. Permitted, unpermitted. Oh, uh, theater. Uh, do you want, even want to think about? There's children's groups that want to have uh, uh, training, uh, theater training. In, uh, theater recreation. In that area. I can see that more than yeah. a school. Oh, yeah, right. hmm. A theater could yeah. be a school. Well, if they do, if they do performances where the public comes in, comes in that's, that's different. That's, that's, that's kind of out of the question. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, however, there are a lot of the children's theaters that want to go into the, our industrial area, and we don't know uh, uh, what you know if they're doing rehearsals, whether it's going to be a lot of people Is there. Is that like or the ones that do the summer camps? Yeah, they say they the want school. rehearsal space. Yeah, they say rehearsal space, but the, they really will do shows. They they will in Just the long run. Just by my experience, my kids did this a couple of years. But they're like a billion. Kids. Not yeah. but I mean, the, there's like 50, 60 kids. Mm -hmm. Right. That so is that a thought for, those for this production. Yeah, I think I would take and make sure that we decide whether we want something like that in there. Okay. So why don't I, you try I think to create the definition of that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, okay. gymnastics has 50, 60 I'm, kids. Too. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. realistically, well, a theater is no different than gymnastics because right. they do do performances right. there. There you go. You know, I mean, they Same have the, the cheer place, teams. The dance place on Coachella. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. different times I go yeah. by there and just. Is gymnastics all. Compet competition. Is 
Kidnastics, mm -hmm. though, classes, just different classes going on at the same time? Yes. yes. Yeah. They probably have eight classes going on at the same time from 3.30 till 9. They count money all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm just yeah. trying to figure out. And then they also, they have cheer team, they have like right. club cheer. Yeah. I, so then, you know, they practice there. So and don't stigmatize the title of the use, stigmatize the impact yeah. of the use. Right. So you guys are doing a good job saying a theater is really no different than gymnastics because really the impact is kids being dropped off at all hours by the parents. But how many of those do we want to put in that one area? Exactly. Yeah. How many can well, but that's mm -hmm. why when you do a CUP, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You'll yes. be able to. But we need to define it, and then we can do the CUP yeah. for it. Is that enough so for it's you? a possibility. Mm -hmm. Is that enough for you? Yeah. Okay. With that, we need to leave that public hearing open so we don't okay. have to notice it, and we'll continue the public hearing to the next. Okay, we'll continue the public hearing until our January 18th, I think? 28th meeting. January 28th. Did you do the overlay already on, on uh, Arrowhead? Yeah, it's yeah. on mm -hmm. the city council. Just the mm -hmm. second reading. Yeah. You heard, you've, have you, you heard about a pending sale on the back acreage over there? Yep. Hmm? What do they want to do? They want to sell it. That's what we were talking about, guys. Which one? Arrowhead. Arrowhead. I feel like, well, should we go it's to? It's not on our agenda. It's not on our agenda, okay. so maybe items from, we'll get into items from council. Okay. From a, Are there any items from the community development director? Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I don't see you before you Same to you. Okay. Commissioner reports, Art? Uh, yeah, uh, regarding Arrowhead, I heard I, he I heard through the there's no secrets in the real estate business, and I heard uh, a strong rumor about a, about a sale going on over on the the, the acreage behind Arrowhead, and um, which and I guess evidently it's true. Uh, would have been nice to have known about it when we were talking about it because we d we distinctly talked about. Do we do a overlay versus a a uh, just an outright zone change? Because whenever they decide to sell it, we want to be able to at least require that. Oh no, never going to happen. Blah blah blah. <coughs> Here we <laughs> are. Happened. Here we are before before the second reading. We, we got something going. I'm frankly of the opinion that uh, that we ought to probably suggest that we reconsider that overlay versus a. That we reconsider the overlay. I don't know if it's too late, but if it hasn't passed the council yet. It might be worthy of further consideration. Would you have an opinion from council on that? I feel a little. Uh, General plan made it an overlay, right? You'd have to go back, redo the general plan. My guess is they'll have an application in before you can amend <laughs> that they would. Rush to get an application in. So unless the council, and do we know what the use is? We don't. Do we know what the what, what type of industrial use you're no going to put in? Been filed, well, hasn't been sold. I'm just saying. Yeah, it hasn't been sold. I'm just saying that they would. Oh, get I mean, something. you know, I, I think you know. They would get something on file. You have no idea what. Before we could get a yeah. general plan through here. See what our That's previous a little are. In council, so absent a moratorium. That might well. So there sell, is a chance. Saying there is a chance. Guys, this is not. <laughs> no, this is not a discussion. Yeah, it's not on agenda that. item. I'm just bringing Action. that up. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Sir. And uh, I guess we could agendaize that for a special. Maybe we ought to have a special meeting on something like that. That could result in maybe a recommendation of the moratorium to the council. Well, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and thank the staff for the nice Christmas dinner that we had and the gift and everything. Yes, thank you. Thank you for um, the little milk drink I had. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, thank you for these. These were good. Oh, you're welcome. Art didn't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I finished this already. I love it. Good yeah, thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are we taking these with us again? No. Nope. Okay. We're going to start from scratch, right? Tired of that rolling down. Yeah. Car. <laughs> yeah, we've got to reorganize the way you strip out of the stuff you don't need and put in the stuff you do need.
We've got an extra week. This is good. Are we good? Good. Okay, the meeting's adjourned.